the thorough analysis of the origin of species, lesson 21. Were there no organic beings before the Cambrian? The title of chapter 10 is On the Imperfection of the Geological Record. The only way to study the changing phases of organic being consists in observing fossils preserved in strata. However, the main cause of innumerable intermediate links not now occurring everywhere throughout nature lies in the extreme imperfection of the geological record. Fossils explored by us are only an extremely small portion out of fossils formed during the past periods of vast time. No organism wholly soft can be preserved. Shells and bones decay and disappear when left on the bottom of the sea, where sediment is not accumulating. The remains which do become embedded if in island or gravel will, when the beds are upraised, generally be dissolved by the percolation of rainwater charged with carbonic acid. Their preservation is extremely rare and awfully accidental stratigraphically, but the imperfection in the geological record largely results from another and more important cause than any of the foregoing, namely from the several formations being separated from each other by wide intervals of time. We may infer that during the periods which were blank and barren in a country, great piles of sediment charged with new and peculiar forms of life can elsewhere be accumulated. Also, the frequent and great changes in the mineralogical composition of consecutive formations generally implies great changes in the geography of the surrounding lands. Hence, the sediment was derived and it is reasonable to infer that there was vast intervals of time elapsed between each formation. Consequently, the rich formation of fossils is confined to the place to meet the qualifications to embed and preserve the remains before they had time to decay during periods of subsidence. Still more, the beds which were then accumulated will generally have been destroyed by being upraised and brought within the limits of the coast action. During periods of elevation, the area of the land and of the adjoining shore parts of the sea will be increased and new stations, where is favorable for the formation of new varieties and species will be formed. But during such periods, there will generally be a blank in the geological record. On the other hand, during subsidence, the inhabited area and the number of inhabitants will decrease and consequently during subsidence. There will be much extinction, so few new varieties or species will be formed, but it is during these very periods of subsidence that the deposits which are richest in fossils have been accumulated. If we confine our attention to any one formation, it becomes more difficult to understand why we do not therein find closely graduated varieties within allied species, which lived at its commencement and at its close. Although each formation may remark a very long lapse of year, each probably 
is short compared with the period requisite to change one species into another. When we see a species first appearing in the middle of any formation, it would be rash in the extreme to infer that it had not elsewhere previously existed. So again, when we find the species disappearing before the last layers have been deposited, it would be equally rash to suppose that it then become extinct. A certain paleontologist asserting that species are immutable simply because geology assured does not reveal any such finely graduated organic chains, occasionally regarded varieties as different species. It is also probable that each great period of subsidence would be interrupted by oscillations of level, and that slight climatical changes would intervene during such lengthy periods. And in these cases, the inhabitants of the archipelago would migrate, and no closely consecutive record of their modifications could be preserved in any one formation. So it is impossible for us to find those fine transitional forms to connect the past and the present species in our geological formations. The abrupt manner in which whole groups of species suddenly appear in certain formations has been urged by several paleontologists as a fatal objection to the belief in the transmutations. Also, the difficulty of assigning any good reason for the absence of vast files of strata rich in fossils. Beneath, the Cambrian system is very great. The case at present must remain inexplicable. But to show that it may hereafter receive some explanation, we may give the hypothesis that the sedimentation occurred in the neighborhood of the now existing continents of Europe and North America. In order to explain the imperfection of geological record, Charles Darwin quotes Lyell's metaphor as follows. We possess the last volume alone, relating only to two or three countries of this volume. Only here and there a short chapter has been preserved, and of each page only here and there a few lines. Each word of the slowly changing language, more or less different, in the successive chapters may represent the forms of life which are entombed in our consecutive formations and which falsely appear to us to have been abruptly introduced. On this view, the difficulties above discussed are greatly diminished or even disappear. Here I end. Subscribe button, please. Shalom.